Hi everyone, this is Amy from the Helms Academy and today we're doing a GED and HiSET grammar practice question test. So we'll look at four practice test questions today as well as their context and talk about some tips for how you can identify the types of grammar mistakes they're looking for on these tests. So just to keep in mind, um, this portion, the grammar portion of the test, if you're taking the GED, will be part of the reasoning through language arts. And if you're taking the high set, it will be part of the writing portion along with the essay. So if you haven't already taken a grammar practice test and you are a Helms Academy student, then you will be able to go on to our essential education website and use the writing part one if you're doing high set or the language portion for the GED to take a practice test. This is a great way to get used to the types of questions that are on there and to show what skills you already have so they can create a customized learning plan for what you'll be doing moving forward. So a few tips to share with you today. If you're looking to identify grammar mistakes, you can read the text out loud and mouth the words. This is really important because our eyes will skip over mistakes, but our voices or even just mouthing the words if we can't say them out loud will make a huge difference in what we see and understand. It allows us to catch more errors than we would with just our eyes alone. You can also circle or highlight or even just write down anything that you see that stands out to you when you read through the text. So a full text will be provided first, and if you see anything on there that just doesn't sound right or feels a little out of place, or maybe you see some punctuation you think is uh, doesn't seem right there, you can go and circle or highlight that if you're taking a paper test or just make a note on the page that you are working on. That's going to help because it's good to know uh, what your gut instinct is in that moment, that there's something a little off that you'd like to change. Sometimes when we see all the multiple choice options, they can be really overwhelming. And so to be able to go and look at something where we've already made a decision that this needs to change and we have an idea of how it might need to change, that can be helpful to narrow down our decisions later. And lastly, I'd encourage you to always double check punctuation and capitalization in each sentence that you're reading. If you see a title of something, but the first letters of each word are not capitalized, or if you see a comma, but you think there should be a period there instead, those are all good things to make a note of. Now, it can be really overwhelming also to think about the immense amount of grammar out there. You could spend a lot of your life studying and reviewing grammar, and there would always be small pieces that you may not know or have a definitive answer to or disagree with with other folks. Thankfully, we don't have to get into that level of grammar here. What you'll need to know for this test are the basics, and they may ask you or push you to, to answer something a little bit more complex, but if you know the basics, you're gonna do just fine on this test. So here are a few of the things that I would recommend focusing on. Making sure you know what makes up a complete sentence. So the basics of that would be to remember that a complete sentence always has a subject and a verb. Now, in addition to that, we could look at things like independent and dependent clauses um, and some other deeper terms when it comes to grammar. But if you at least know that you should be looking for a subject and a verb in a sentence to make sure it's complete, that's a great start. You should also know things like when do you use a period, a comma, a semicolon, or a colon. You should know when things should be capitalized or left as lowercase. Keeping the grammar uniform throughout a sentence is really important. So for example, with verb tenses, I had just gone into the store and see my friend in the first aisle. So right away, you might hear that and think this just doesn't seem to go together. So we could change that, right? I had just gone into the store and seen my friend in the first aisle. You might also say saw my friend in the first aisle because both imply that it happened in the past. For lists, another thing you may look for is I like to swim, hiking, and fishing. You wanna make sure that things in a list are matching. So here we have to swim, but the other two end in ing. So we'd wanna change that to swimming instead. Or alternatively, we could change it to, I like to swim, to hike, and to fish. So that continuity, that uniformity within the sentences is a very important aspect that they're looking for on this test. So I will invite you now, if you'd like to read through the full document, to pause the video here so that you can take a moment to look over this text. 
So this text is a sample business document. It's addressed to Mr. Quinn. And we can see just in that first sentence that it's a, a cover letter for an application um, and inquiring about a job. Uh, in the end, we see who it's written by as it says, sincerely, Patrick Jones. So at the very minimum, I want you to look over it and see that information. But again, I'll give you the invitation to click pause now to take a look at this text and read over it yourself. All right, so we're going to take that text and now we're going to look at individual pieces of it. Now, it's good to have a context of what you're looking for in um, the text as a whole so that you understand what it is that they're talking about and have some context for these individual lines. However, if you're short on time, a quicker way to move through would be to read the, the text first and then any questions that they ask, like here, sentences three and four. Maybe you go back and read sentence two and sentence five as well, just so you have a bit more context about what's happening. So that's another way to move through this test. For today, we're gonna to look at just these sentences three and four, which say, in May, I graduated from Prince William Community College, graduating with an Associates of Arts degree in horticulture. Which is the best way to write the underlying portion of the text? If the original is the best way, choose option one. So we have here five options. And if you would like to test your own skills, I'd encourage you to pause here and pick the option you think is best and restart the video when you're ready to see the answer. So we have these four options and we can see that most likely it's going to be a change with punctuation or adding a bit or taking away some wording. In this situation, we're looking for option five. That would change the sentence to, in May, I graduated from Prince William Community College with an Associate of Arts degree in horticulture. So if we take a look at why we did that, the first part there, in May, all the way to college, is a full sentence. So we could end that with a period. However, that second piece is more information that has to do with the previous sentence. And it also is written as if it's a complete sentence, but it's not. There's no subject and verb to, to note here. And so I'd encourage you to think about that as you see periods, making sure the two sides are complete sentences. In this case, because they're not, we can simplify it, taking out that word graduating, and just keep it as community college with an Associates of Arts for more flow and ease and grammatical correctness. Let's look at another example. This one's from sentence five. My concentration within the program, which was designing gardens and choosing the appropriate plants for particular soils and regions. Which is the best way to write the underlying portion of the text? And if the original is the best way, choose option one. Now, the key word here is the word which. If you'd like to take a moment to read over these options and see which one you would choose, go ahead and pause the video here. Okay, let's take a look. So this word which is the one that we need to pay attention to. Which indicates something called a dependent clause. So we're adding some additional information. It's referring to something else in the sentence, telling us more about the person's concentration within the program. But it doesn't actually constitute a complete sentence by itself. It's something additional. So here, when we look at the phrase that is defining the concentration, that whole phrase would be, which was designing gardens and choosing the appropriate plants for particular soils and regions. I know that's long, but when the word which is there, that means all that I just read to you is describing more about the concentration within the program. And that means we still don't even have a verb to tell us what about that concentration we're doing. So I want to encourage you to look over these options here and the best option to replace this is actually the simplest. We can just remove the word which, and that means was becomes the verb in our sentence. So it's a simple solution for a complex problem, but keep in mind when you see that word which or a word like whose or whom, those are words that are going to indicate that there's a description coming. Another one would be that. So here we just take it out and we can move forward. For next, next example, it says, our community no Capital City Gardening Services is a community that does excellent work and strives hard to meet the demands of its clients. 
what correction should be made to sentence nine? Well, maybe you already heard it, but there is something in here that doesn't quite flow. Right away, when I look at that first part of the sentence, I notice something off. Take a pause here. Do you notice it also? See if you can find the right answer in one, two, three, or four, or five. So let's take a look. The change that we want to make is from no to knows. In fact, when you read this out loud, you may even find yourself correcting it out loud. Our community knows Capital City Gardening Services. You know from the way of speaking that and from the way that it rolls off your tongue that that's a change that should be made. So here, it's easy to identify what should be changed. As our last example, we have sentence 15. Thank you for your consideration. I look forward to hearing from you. So here it's asking us which is the best way to write the underlying portion of the text. And we can always choose the original way for option one, make no changes. So here it says consideration, I look and I see a comma. Now, when I see punctuation right in the middle of the underlying portion, that's gonna raise another red flag for me. And I'm gonna pay attention to see if that's what I want to keep there or if there's something I want to change. So if you'd like to practice on your own, I'd encourage you to pause the video now so that you can take a look at the options and come right back for the answer. All right, so if we look at our answer options here, I noticed that I have a full sentence, thank you for your consideration, and another full sentence, I look forward to hearing from you. But I know that a comma can't separate two full sentences without some help. So I either need to separate these with something like a period or a semicolon, or I need to add some words here. So my best option here is gonna be option three, consideration and I look forward to hearing from you. We use the word and here to show that these ideas are connected and to connect our two complete sentences. Thank you so much for joining me today and good luck on your language arts test. I hope that you learned something new and that you'll join us for many other videos on this channel and subscribe so that you get all the latest updates. You can also check out the Helms Academy on Facebook and Instagram and on our website at helmsacademy.org.